Hello and welcome to Night Hunter Books. Welcome to our August haul. We've not been very good at reading this month. However, we've been very good at acquiring books. As <laughs> always. <laughs> to be fair, we have both our birthdays here. And a couple of freebies as well. So the first one I picked up was Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes which you've been intending to read for ages, but this was a particularly pretty cover we found in foils. I think this is the first time I've seen it not part of the Galantz Sci-Fi Masterwork series, uh, so mm. with its kind of own cover. This I think is YA, or at least a very easy read for sci-fi. Yeah, when it was published YA was not a thing. No, By no, about it's a 20 new years. Category. <laughs> yeah, because this is written in the 60s. It's about a man with a very low IQ and they've discovered a scientific method of making someone really smart and he is the first human test case for this uh, but there is a mouse called Algernon who this has been tried on beforehand and it says on the back um, this all seems to work amazingly, he's a genius, he's you know thrilled, he's always wanted to be smart but then the mouse starts to get sick so that, that sounds intriguing and it sounds like it could be fun you know, good to hit some of the sci-fi classics. My first book is A City Dreaming by Daniel Polanski, which I actually picked up uh, free at Nine Worlds, the convention we went to earlier in August, which is an urban fantasy set in a hipster magical New York, where um, somebody who'd much rather be sipping artisanal beer and uh, lying in gets drawn into uh, intrigue that threatens to destroy the city. The next one I picked up was actually at a local second-hand bookstore, which I quite liked. I, I wanted to find something just to support them. So this is Generation X by Douglas Coopland, um, which is actually the book I think that uh, certainly popularised the term Generation X. Um, and it follows a load of 20-somethings who kind of grew up in the 80s and had quite a lot of cultural impact. And I think it's the type of book that gets labelled as a cult novel. Um, so I want to see what the fuss is about and uh, see if I can, as a millennial, relate to uh, what's going on here. My next one is Dog Days by John Lovett, which features another, it, it's another urban fantasy with a reluctant hero uh, drawn into um, a bigger conflict. Uh, though this time, rather than being excessively hipster, he sounds like he's a bit of a down and out. Um, and has a magical dog companion? Is that what sold you? That and the fact it was 70p. In the same second hand bookshop. My next one is another one that we um, were given for free at Nine Worlds. Uh, this is Starborn by Lucy Houndsome. So I don't know much about this, but um, it seems to be set in a, a fantasy world. Uh, the main character, a young woman, interrupts a kind of traditional ceremony. And then when a natural disaster hits, then she gets blamed and has to flee her village. And then goes to the city and meets all sorts of people and there's, you know, visions of the past and unlocking of her magic. So, sounds like fun. Uh, it doesn't sound like there's kind of much to make it stand out to me at the moment, but I'm sure at some point I'll be in the mood, or you will. My next book is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. And if you've seen more than three videos on Booktube, you've probably seen somebody talk about this series. It is the concluding volume in uh, Nora's wildly successful trilogy, the previous two of which have won the Hugo Award for Best Novel. The series started with fifth season. Yeah, um, so high hopes for this one. So this one is a birthday gift. A short story collection, Invisible Planets, which is collected by Ken Liu, and all of the works are from Chinese authors, and all translated by Ken Liu as well. I've been getting on really well with Chinese science fiction at the moment, and this has a few authors in it that we've already read some stories by. Xin Liu, who wrote The Three-Body Problem, and another that stood out was Hao Jingfan, um, who wrote Folding Beijing, which was a Hugo winner a few years ago for Best Novelette. So this is probably one that we'll just kind of get through slowly and dip in and out of, um, but I'm really looking forward to starting it. My next one is a birthday present, uh, The Princess of Blood by Tom Lloyd. This is the book two in the God Fragment series, which um, is sort of military fantasy, does that make sense? In the same sort of way you get military SF 
So it follows a group of mercenaries who um, I suspect are increasingly going to be drawn into conflicts that um, are one, bigger than they really want to be, and two, they're not going to get paid for. And this is an example of why it's uh, good to um, lend books to your family, because then when they want to read the next one, then they'll just buy it for you as a present. <laughs> yes, indeed. My next one uh, I bought on the recommendation of a friend. I don't really know much about it, it actually took me a while to even work out what the title was. So I think it's Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth, which is by Chris Ware. And seeing as it doesn't even have a blurb, then I'm going to assume that I shouldn't really know much about this going in and not look it up. The art is in a very cartoony style, um, but apparently it's a very sad book. My next and final one is Paper Girls Volume 3 by Vaughan, Chang, Wilson and Fletcher. And this is uh, continuing the Stranger Things-esque um, story about a series of uh, newspaper delivery girls who get sucked into all sorts of shenanigans involving time travel. And then my final one, another birthday present, is a bit of an odd one for me. This is non-fiction and is actually a book about writing books. I, I don't write books but I'm still kind of intrigued by the process. wanted this because it's written by Jeff Vandermeer who wrote the Annihilation trilogy. And I've really liked anything I've read by him and this mm. has kind of a few bits and pieces about how he writes um, but also lots of interviews um, mm. with other authors, including like George R. R. Martin and Neil Gaiman. This is also a book about writing specifically kind of speculative fiction, um, which is a bit different from other ones I've seen. Mm -hmm. And also, it's beautiful. It's filled with art um, and kind of infographics and uh, yes, it um, looks like it'll be fun to look through. Let us know in the comments if you've read any of these, uh, or if there's any that you particularly want us to get to soon. Otherwise, thank you for watching. See you again soon.